Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. This monstrosity. So, in the last video, I showed you a bit of a tour of some of the tanks in the fish room and quickly passed over this one going, oh yeah, that's got to be of control. It has. <laughs> um, there's no other way of saying it, I guess. I'd like to say that this was done on purpose with the best of intentions, and it's almost true. So what we've got here is a carpet of cyanobacteria. I called it algae. It was often called blue-green algae, slime algae, but it's not actually algae. It is cyanobacteria. It's a bacteria. It does photosynthesize of light. It is horrible stuff. It's not great. Lots of people will say things like, oh, it's super dangerous. It's not actually harmful to fish or anything like that, because no fish will eat it but it will smother tanks and it will trap air so if it gets on your plants your plants are in for a bit of horrible time if you have floating plants especially it can trap um, all the gases under the surface of the tank and it can degrade water conditions and that can harm your fish but in this scenario it's just in the open areas there's none in the plants that I can see it's just this carpet of horrible cyanobacteria and it started weeks and weeks ago as a little patch and I thought oh that'll be good to make a video about how to get rid of cyanobacteria because I have had it over and over in various tanks and have always managed to get it under control um, I'm not saying it's going to be the same for everyone but I'm going to take you through my methods of what I do First and foremost my number one piece of advice is test your water and not just for the normal things Yes, test your nitrates, but also test for phosphates if you can. If you can get hold of a phosphate tester, in 99.9% .9 of cases, and every time I've had cyanobacteria problems, it's because my phosphates have been high. So I've had to deal with this a lot and managed to get rid of it. There are other preventative measures which some people say on the internet. I, like you, Google things, look up YouTube videos of how-tos, Often they'll say, oh, it's in areas with low flow. I've had it in areas with high flow. Um, it's because your temperature's too high or too low. I've had it in hot tanks and cold tanks. Um, your lights are on too long or not long enough. <laughs> You're just making this up. People just guessing. So in my case, it seems to be pretty uh, undiscriminatory. It will happen where it wants to happen. So I've had it in a few tanks in the fish room and I've always managed to get rid of it. But there are a few kind of tried and tested ways of doing it. Number one is kind of the manual method. That's mostly the one I subscribe to. If you can get in there, it will come off fairly easily as sheets. If you can do a big water change and kind of agitate the surface, if it's on the surface of the substrate like this, it will come up with um, a vacuum, a gravel vac or something like that. Um, if you can take things out, you can brush it off quite easily. Um, if it's in your in and amongst your plants, hello little puffer, that's a little bit more different and you might want to try one of the other treatments which is, once you've done step one of manually removing as much as possible, put your tank into a total blackout. And I mean total, so it's like cover the front, the sides, the back, the top, the bottom, everything. Make sure no light gets in there because it does need light to survive. If you give it three or four days of that total blackout, your fish will be fine, your plants will be fine. The cyano should start to die off, especially if you can manually remove as much as possible. And the third one is some kind of chemical treatment. I've tried a few in the past. They've all worked, so I can't say one's better than the other because they've all done the job. But generally, I like to get in there, get out as much as possible, make sure I'm dealing with the phosphates and they don't come back. So I'm going to get in there, get some of it out, and I'm going to use this Easy Life Blue Exit uh, against cyanobacteria. A lot of reef products are called like, Red Cyano or ChemiClean or various other ones. I've tried a few of them in the past and they've all done the job. Um, this one has also done the job and has been the cheapest. So let's give it a bash. First things first, get out as much as we can. So nearly 700 videos I've made and I still forget to hit the record button sometimes. So this is me after I'd pressed hit record thinking I was stopping the video, explaining to you how important it was this stage where you suck up as much of the sign as possible. 10 minutes spent doing this will make the rest of the process so much easier. So you can kind of see what I was going for here. Get a siphon going, hover it over the carpet of cyano and get it all sucked up into the waste, get rid of it. You just want it out of the tank and the more you get out, the easier the next stages are. Um, if you can get rocks and plants and things like that out easy enough, do that. Um, you can spray them with um, 
I was going to say hydrochloric acid, but don't do that, with um, hydrogen peroxide. You give them a squish of that, that will kill off the cyano as well quite well. But yeah, it's just about at this stage, being as thorough as you can, making sure you're getting up as much as you can, because it's going to make your life easier when you come to the next stage. So hope that makes sense. Um, a technique that I was using is sometimes it will come away in sheets. So if you're very gentle with the tweezers there, you can kind of fold up the sheets and take out one big clump of it all at once. Um, but in this case, and it'll be different for everyone, if it's on your plants, you're not going to be able to do this quite as easily. Um, in this case, it was just as easy to scoop round, sucking it all up with a siphon. Job one done. So that's the first and what I think the most important part done. Get rid of the visible layer of cyanobacteria over anything. Um, if you can get things out and give them a quick spray of some um, hydrogen peroxide, that also will kill off cyano. There are various chemical methods that people will do, but I think whatever you do, get the stuff out of the tank as much as possible. There will still be stuff in there still, so it's management at this point. So step two for me is dealing with the problem. And I think the problem in my tank is high phosphates, as I said. So I'm gonna use a product like Fosgard, which is gonna remove some of the phosphates. In a tank this size, I think it's like 80 mils per 200 liters, but just kinda read the instructions. Definitely don't just eyeball it. Me. This needs a quick rinse before it can go in the tank, so we'll give that a rinse over here. And then you want to put it in an area of high flow, basically, so it's going in the filter. At the end of the filter, just spread out in a little bag like this. So when the filter kicks on, the Fosgard will stop that. I will have to maintain uh, a regimen of doing water tests to make sure the phosphates actually go down to make sure it's doing what it is and nothing else is going too bad. And I could stop there, that would be it. I kind of guarantee that nothing would come back from there. But to be sure, I'm going to go with the extra step, the belt and braces of the chemical element to kill it. Now, as I said, I'm using Easy Life Blue Exit. I've used it before, it's done the job, but I've also done these steps before. So whether or not this does it and it's just a kind of psychosomatic thing, um, if you're in the US, erythromycin and various other things that we can't get here will also do the same thing. And that's about, it's, it's about nuking the tank, making sure that we've got rid of all the cyanide we can, so we're starting from a level where we can at least get some measure of success. If I was just to leave everything and dump a bottle of this in there, I doubt it would make a dent. So all the steps, I think, will give me a, a nice, um, back to normal healthy tank with no cyanobacteria. Um, this stuff, they're all different, so I, I'm not, this isn't sponsored, this is just the one I'm using. I will leave a link in the description for it. I have used it before, I've used other ones as well. But it's more the method than the product, um, so I'm not, this wasn't sent to me, I have no relationship with them. This particular one you have to use 10 mils per 50 litres or 100 litres, whatever it is, every day. It's a five day treatment. So I will do the treatment, but take product, follow instruction, do treatment. And at the end of the week, if you do those three steps, get everything out, find out what the source of the problem was, in my case, high phosphates. In your case, it might be too much light, it might be too many nitrates, not enough nitrates, it could be all kinds of things. Fix the source of the problem, so I've done that, and then mute the tank. We'll do that now. So this is, 10 mil per 80 litres, so I kind of want about 20-ish, 5-ish. Again, definitely not just eyeballing it. We'll do that. And I'm, I'm almost going to guarantee I will have fixed my cyano problem in this tank. Oh, <laughs> should never say that. And but once it's filled back up, we should be good to go. So. 
If you like this kind of thing and this is your first time here, please consider clicking that subscribe button. Come and see me on a Friday night, 9 p.m. UK time. We do a live stream, quizzes, prizes, all that kind of good stuff. Um, come back, click the subscribe button, come back in a few weeks and I'll show you how, how well it has worked or whether it was a complete failure and I have to delete this video. One way or the other, it should be fun. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.